So with three bits of audio, we're going to represent a sine wave like this. We're going to have zero, zero, zero. We're going to have zero, zero, one. We're going to have zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero. <laughs> I'm going to run out of room. One, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, one. So um, we now have eight discrete steps that we could build an, uh, an audio wave with. So if I, if I draw it like down here, for example, just to show you what a sine wave would look like, it would be like this. And so forth. So you kind of see we're starting to resemble a sine wave. And you can also see how as you increase what they call bit quantization, you're going to get more resolution. Remember, one bit is just looks like this. That's no dynamic range. It's either on or off. With two bits, we have more resolution. It's not very good, but there's four steps between off and full scale on. Three bits, there's eight steps between off and full scale. And if you were to continue doing the math, you would find that uh, there's the number of discrete steps from zero decibels, like theoretically zero decibels, and full scale is, since we're dealing with a number system based on two, it's going to be two to the power of n, where n equals bit quantization depth. So two to the power of one equals two. So that's, uh, that's one bit. We have two steps off or on. Two to the power of two equals four. There's four steps between off and on. Freeze! This, two to the power eight of eight, is how the very first digital pitch shifter worked. 